Well, it's tough to be the spokesperson for your party, for your conference, when you disagree with where 90% of your party and the conference is. So I do think there's going to be a change. You know, where I was, I was for making a change three months ago. There was a vote and, and that didn't prevail. Since that time, I've said we should be focusing on the crazy things that the Democrats are doing, all their left wing agenda and their spending and, and, and so forth. But uh, unfortunately, our conference chair wants to continue to talk about things that aren't, I think, in the best interest of the party, in the best interest of the conference. So I do think there's going to be uh, another vote, and I think the outcome will be different. And do you think Elise Stefanik uh, would be someone who would be favored for that job? Sure. So uh, you sure. Would support I think her. she. I think she would do do a. She, she would do a fine job. That's going to be the call of the conference. But I think she would do a fine job. Uh, I do think the conference is is ready to uh, uh, to make a change. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I just I just think that's where the the conference is. Uh, so uh, I think it's it's probably going to happen sometime in the near future. Okay. Uh, you wrote switching topics here for a moment. You, you wrote a letter to the FBI director Chris Ray because you have a deep concern that the FISA. Um, abnormalities that were in place during the Russia collusion situation are, are continuing. Tell me about that. Well, it's not my concern. This is from the FISA judge. He said there's widespread uh, use of the FISA process in a way it's not supposed to be used. And remember, Martha, this is on top of what we learned a year and a half ago from Mr. Horowitz's report, where he randomly picked 29 different FISA uh, applications, and there were problems with every single one of them. Some of them, they didn't even have the underlying documentation, the underlying proof, but like the footnotes that you would have in a, in a document. They didn't even have that in four of the situations. So this is how bad it is. And when you view it in context. I mean, remember, the IRS targeted conservatives uh, 10 years ago. Yeah. Five years ago, it was the, uh, the FBI targeting President Trump's campaign. And now we find out that you got the FBI doing a raid on uh, uh, the, the president's lawyer's home just last week. And now this continued, continued abuse of the FISA How process. Could that be? I think I, Americans I mean, are rightly no, concerned. I, I, and we I better think, have some I hearings on this where we get concerned. some answers. Yeah, I, I mean, I think it's amazing when you consider how much sunlight was spread on this issue and the obvious yeah. egregious behavior that happened in order to spy on people like Carter Page and, you know, Americans who turned out to, to, have, to be innocent uh, in these cases. I can't, I'm shocked that there's not any cleanup on aisle seven where this is concerned. And yeah. what's the response from, <laughs> yeah. from the FBI to, to your bringing this up and do hearings? When? Well, when will that happen? I think that's also well, a frustration. Well, I, I, it, well it, 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 the hearings need to happen yesterday. That's how serious it is. And we need to remember one important thing. It's the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Correct. Court, the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act, not spying on American citizens. And this is all part of, remember, there was also an additional story yesterday where the Department of Homeland Security is looking to contract out as, as a way to try to get around the Constitution, which I don't think you can. And try to contract out with some outside entity, some private entity, to spy on American citizens as well. This should frighten everyone. And again, when you view it in context, in light of what the IRS did to conservatives, in light of what the FBI did yeah. to President Trump's campaign, in light of what we've just discovered in the last several weeks, well, we, we, last night on Laura's show, they had a couple in Alaska where the FBI stormed into their house, put yeah, them in handcuffs, that. and interrogated them. Turned out they had the wrong couple, for yeah. goodness sake. Because they, so they said she had Nancy, they had Nancy Pelosi's nervous, laptop, nervous right, from January 6th, and they, they were just... <laughs> yeah, we don't have that um, in Alaska. Um, you know, I guess people just think that there's a check and balance, right? And so where is, where's the balance? I guess that would be coming, you know, that should be coming from Congress and oversight. Well, it's a, right. It's supposed to be. Now, we'll see. We have yet to have a full committee hearing in the Judiciary Committee. Here we are five months into this, uh, in this new Congress, and Jerry Nadler has yet to have a hearing. So we're, we're supposed to have our first one this week, but it's not on the border crisis. It's not on the threats to your liberties. It's on, it's on and now it's an important yeah. thing, but it's on the Copyright Office, for goodness sake. So oh th this is the lack of concern from the left, because right now the left is using big government to come after conservatives' right. fundamental freedoms and fundamental yeah. liberties.